This is a really fascinating one here and a very, very important story. Leading United Nations judge Patrick Robinson says the UK can no longer ignore the greatest atrocity and should pay over 18 trillion to 14 countries for its involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. Well, this comes as the descendants of former Victorian Prime Minister William Gladstone have apologised for their family's role in slavery, offering to pay £100,000 to the Caribbean. We're joined now by Judge Patrick Robinson. Um, uh, Judge Patrick Robinson, a real uh, pleasure and an honour to have you on the show this morning. Um, there is no doubt that this is probably one of, if not the greatest atrocity to mankind in, in our history, really. Um, however, the argument is that this was a long time ago and actually can countries, can Britain really afford to put out, at a time like now particularly, $18 trillion? And it won't just be the UK, of course. There'll be lots of other countries across Europe and the West that will be responsible too. Do you think it's a practical solution? Yes, it is. And um, I can't accept the argument that it was a long time ago. It may have been a long time ago, but there are obviously current day consequences from the practice of transatlantic chattel slavery. Those consequences stare us in the face every day when you look at the position, the situation of the descendants of the enslaved in any part of the world where they are, and there is a basis for a comparison, they are at the bottom of the economic ladder, and the reason for that is transatlantic chattel slavery. They started their life as free people with not a cent um, from the United Kingdom, which paid 20 million pounds to the plantation owners. That deficit has still not been made up by the descendants of the enslaved. So yes, there is a basis for the United Kingdom, and not just the United Kingdom, um, the other former slaveholding states, to pay reparations because rep transatlantic chattel slavery was an internationally wrongful conduct. So what do you and I explained yesterday mm. Um, in my... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was just going to just pick on your point about, about the UK, but what, what, what I was going to say, what would you say then to Rishi Sunak? Because he is our Prime Minister at the moment and he said he will not apologise for Britain's record on slavery because tr trying to unpick our history is not the approach. That is pretty categoric from our Prime Minister. He's not willing to apologise, let alone discuss reparations. Well, I, I, I regret very much the Prime Minister's um, statement. Uh, obviously, um, I have uh, respect for him, and it's a position that I very much hope he will consider after listening to arguments that are reasonable. And he'll find that the approach that has been taken in the work which led to the Brattle Group's um, quantification is one that is entirely in accordance um, with international law. At first, there was a symposium which looked at the lawfulness of transatlantic chattel slavery and found that it was unlawful. And then we had another symposium on reparations. Mm. Uh, that's when the Brattle Group came in. So we didn't wake up one day and say to ourselves, oh, this was an awful business that was carried out against our ancestors. Let us quantify the reparations. No. Well, that, First, that, that we consider. So, sorry to interrupt you. I thought you'd pause. I mean, I, I, I think there's no question, is there, over mm. the horror, no question over the fault. What about the practicalities? Because when you ask a government to pay reparations, they're taking money from the taxpayer, aren't they? Is that who would pay? Because, of course, many people who live in the UK are descend from people who were wronged. And so, and they're often the ones, as you point out, who the implications of maybe their start and where they came from has meant that they are impacted more greatly by having to find that money and by tax. So, so who is going to pay for this and how can you ensure that it's 
the right person pays and it goes to the right people if it were to happen. But that's a matter for the United Kingdom government to, to determine. Uh, what international law does is that it ascribes responsibility for wrongful conduct, and we have wrongful conduct here. Uh, of course, um, as far as the payment is concerned, um, it must be stressed that it remains within the sovereign will of a victim state to determine what sum it will accept as reparations. So that although in the Brattle report, the United Kingdom is required to pay $9.5 trillion in respect of Jamaica, Jamaica can agree on another sum um, okay. with the United and Kingdom. Then, if I may ask and you so, as well. Um, that, that, um, that, is, that is the way out. Yeah. I'm asking you as well, because we've already had people say, why is it always the British that are accused and we weren't, uh, you know, it's not us alone. And you've mentioned other countries that will be involved in it. When you look at other states and other nations that were involved in their horrific slave trade, um, Portugal actually, statistically, um, is far, far greater in terms of the, the numbers and the extent of the involvement in the slave trade. So would there be some sort of order in which you, you tried to get these reparations? Would everybody pay up at once? Again, just thinking of the practical well, I'm, I'm glad you raised that because um, I am um, addressing the United Kingdom only because I'm in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I mean, the report deals with reparations to be paid by many states, reparations to be paid by the United Kingdom, to be paid by France, to be paid by Spain, to be paid by Portugal, which actually started transatlantic chattel slavery about 1450, and to be paid by... by um, uh, one or two Scandinavian countries. So it's not Britain alone. If you read the report, it, it stretches across a lot of countries, European countries. It's not the United Kingdom alone. Okay. In respect of Jamaica, from about 1509 to 1655, it would be Spain yeah. that would be paying. I'm only addressing the United Kingdom for convenience okay. because I find myself in the United Kingdom. Hmm? OK, uh, uh, Mr Robinson, I mean, as you say, there has been a precedent of this. There are reparations being paid to Holocaust survivors by Germany. The United Kingdom itself played, paid millions in reparations to uh, the victims of the, uh, the Mau Mau uprising in Kenya. So there has been a precedent here. However, it doesn't look like this current government is going to budge. But you have mentioned that there are legal avenues. What action could you realistically take? Rishi Sunak says, no, it's not happening. What action could, could anybody take in the courts legally to make the United Kingdom act and pay up? Well, if you get um, the matter to court, and that itself might present um, some, some difficulty, uh, because as you're aware, you can't get um, a state to court um, without that state's acceptance of the jurisdiction of the court, and that, that will present um, some difficulty. There is another approach of perhaps an advisory opinion from the International Court of, of Justice. But I actually favor um, a diplomatic uh, solution. The two sides getting together, the former slaveholding countries, that's the European countries, plus the um, United States, of course, and Brazil too, because um, Brazil and the United States are both victim states and responsible and responsible states. We need to get the former slaveholding countries to meet with the victim states. And I believe the Brattle Report comes in here because it provides an excellent basis for some solution to this age old problem of reparations for the grotesque wrong of transatlantic chattel slavery. Okay. It's not beyond us. We need the political will to achieve the solution. Right. Uh, Judge Patrick Robinson from the United Nations, we really do appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much for joining us on Good Morning Britain. It's a really fascinating one, isn't it? Uh, which I think this debate it's will continue. It's a thorny and fascinating it one. It really People is. People have very impassioned uh, I, 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 beliefs I, I, about it. I kind of feel like, from a negotiation point of view, starting with $18, million, $18 trillion is probably, probably not the right way to go. You know, it might well, be as simple as that. I think most people might agree 
some kind of reparations, but maybe is it the amount or, you know, who it goes to? I, I don't know. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And as you say, you know, great to hear from the person that, that's arguing on behalf of the United Nations. Mm.